like perfect timing. All right. Hello. Hello, everybody. I am super excited. So I have been working with the Jenny Bird for over a year now. Um, here's Zach. Um, for over a year now, she has been insanely helpful in helping equip me, equip Zach to be able to serve you guys well. Um, she gives great practical tips. She's been in this industry for a very long time, and she works with a ton of top industry leaders, but including some of our favorite mentors that we have on our team, like Francesca Fields and Marielle Filipponi, um, which is why I was like, obviously, this chick knows what she's talking about, and I have got to work with her. <laughs> so I am really, really honored. I would love if you are not naked or there's not someone naked behind you, please turn your camera on out of respect and be able to really appreciate her time. Let her know how much we appreciate her coming here and pouring into us. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited. I hope you have a pen and paper ready. And Jenny, take it away. Thank you, Casey. Um, and I am, I mean, thank you for that intro. And I am just so excited um, to be here with you guys. And yeah, um, Marielle and Frank, uh, I have known them for many years. And before me, they coached with my father. Um, and so when Marielle came over to Q, she called me and she said, hey, I want you to coach my team. Will, will you come do that? And I said, absolutely. So that's how I got to know, you know, the amazing leaders um, with NQ, Fran and Tara. And I mean, the list could go on and on of all the amazing leaders. So it has been such a blessing. So I kind of called this my, I was thinking, I was I was chatting with Casey earlier about what kind of to focus on tonight. And I'm kind of calling this my fireside chat, right? So I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things, but I want this to be very interactive. It, you know, so please feel free to, you know, raise your hand. I'll leave plenty of time for questions at the end, right? So we can go a completely different direction if, if we need to do that as well. So I just kind of want to give you some some things that I've been talking about with leaders um, over the past several months and, and kind of give you some tips on what I think are some of the most important things to be thinking about right now and then leave time for questions and all that kind of all that kind of good stuff. I will tell you while I'm talking, I am not the best at looking at chats and I do that because I try not to multitask because, you know, really we're not good multitaskers. We have one processor, our brain, but I will look at them in the end. So if you want to throw a question in there, feel free, but I'm not ignoring you. I promise I will come back to it. I intentionally try not to um, look at those. And it, it doesn't it drive you crazy when like a speaker's like mid sentence and then they're like, oh, hey, Sally, Sally said this. And you're like, what? Because that's because they saw the chat in the comment, right? Um, okay, so let me start by um, give me a sense. Actually, put this in the chat if you can. How long have you been in queue? Kind of give me a sense of the group. I'm, I'm kind of curious how long how long y'all have all been um, a part of queue. Like, are we talking? I think most have been here at least like five months, over a year, fourteen months. Yep, just over a year. Awesome. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought most. So I'm going to give you a sense of something. Um, in 2020, right, when the pandemic started, direct sales did not fail the pandemic in 2020. Now, those some of you might not have been here um, in 2020, but just so you know, I coach lots of top leaders across different companies, and the direct sales industry did not feel the pandemic in 2020. Now, I coach some other, like, franchise owners that have brick-and-mortar shops. They greatly felt the pandemic in 2020, right? They were having to close their shops, go to 50% capacity, it was, it was like, I, it was like I was coaching like night and day, like people closing their shops and then direct sales was thriving in 2020. Okay. So then comes 2021. Now, when I give you these trend lines, I can't promise you that every single direct sales person did this. I can tell you this out of all the people I coach across the, across companies, a hundred percent of the people follow this trend line. And this is what's so bizarre. I've never seen that happen before, right? Most of the time when I see trends, I see 60 to 70% of the people follow the trend and 30 to 40% of the people defy the odds, right? This was not the case in 2021. So in 2021, from January to May, we were in growth. We were in big growth. Most people had their peak of volume in either May or June. Some people had June, some people had May, but but most most people had their peak in May or June, okay? Then the summer hit, and it was like the pandemic summer, right? Like, it's like people had been on lockdown and people just said, I'm out of the house. I'm going to the pool every day. I'm done. I'm not working my business. 
and leaders just like could not get people's attention no matter what. Right. I mean, I remember I told, um, I told one leader one time, I was like, seriously, I think you could tap dance on stage naked and still not get anybody's attention. Like it just, it was the pandemic summer. Right. So then, so we kind of hit a decline in June, July, and August. So then September comes around and everybody's back. Kids are back in school. Leaders are finally like, oh my gosh, my people are back. I'm talking to them. September was up, but it was not yet back to our peak in May. And leaders got discouraged because everybody was like, wait, everybody's back. They should be working. Why am I not back to where I was in May? So they got discouraged. So then October was down. Then November, November was up, but it was still not back to our peak in May. But November was up with Black Friday and Cyber Monday and some of those kind of specials. December of 2021 was either, for most people, it was either equal to November or even a little bit down from November. Then January was either equal or down, and then February has been up. But most people are still not back to their peak of May. And most people feel like, oh, I'm in decline because I'm still not back to my peak of May. Does, it, does this trend line resonate with anybody? Does this, does this apply, right? Yeah, I mean, when I talk to leaders and I tell them this trend line, they'll like have their, their chart of their volume out for the last year. And they're like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what my volume did. Y'all, it is the most bizarre thing. I have never seen that happen in the history of me coaching for like 99.9, and I almost could say 100, but let's go with 99.9% of the people I coach to follow the exact same trend line. That's just bizarre. Right. So what that says to me is not that there's not things we can do differently and not that there's but you're not in this alone. I believe in 2021, there were forces beyond our control. There was the pandemic. We were fighting with, you know, the lockdowns and people just wanting to get out. There was, you know, there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of that energy. So what I'm here to tell you is I just want you to know that because I think for some people they go, oh, my gosh, OK, good. So it's not just me. I'm not just like in this. I'm not just like in this decline, right? So the other thing that I tell with leaders is knowing that we can't just keep comparing ourselves to last May or June. You, you can't, because then you can only grow from where you are right now. Most people are missing their growth because they're only saying, but I'm not back to where I was in May. And so they might be in growth, but they don't even know it because they're just not back to where they were in May, right? So you can only grow from where you are right now. So we have to make that decision of, okay, I want March to be bigger than February. And then I want April to be bigger than, than March and so forth and so on. And then we get in growth, right? So that has been huge. That was a huge aha moment for so many leaders I work with, knowing that trend line and almost everybody I can say, at least everybody I work with, which I would assume we could then apply that because that, that represents several direct sales company. You know, this kind of happened to the whole industry, the pandemic summer, what happened the second half of 2021, right? But now I feel momentum is really picking up in 2022, right? But we have to move past, we can't keep living where we were in 2021. You know, that scientists say the majority of our thinking is either in the past or the future. They actually say 90% of our thinking, we're either regretting the past or worried about the future. When we do that, that leaves only 10% for the moment of now. Well, the moment of now is the only time you have to live, right? So we have to make the choice from where we are right now. So anyway, anyway, knowing knowing those trend lines, here's the other thing I want to tell you. And granted, most of you started about a year ago, so you wouldn't have all these stats. But almost all the leaders I work with, even with the decline in the second half of 2021, when they look at their business as a whole, their entire year of 2021 was higher than 2020 which is awesome because that still says they were in growth. So I want you to know your numbers month to month, but sometimes we do have to step back and look at the bigger picture, right? And say, okay, what was my overall, you know, what was my overall volume? I mean, I remember I added up numbers for leaders and I'd be like, look, you were at a, you know, 30% of growth from 2021 to 2020. And they were like, really? I feel like I'm in decline. But all they were focused on was their volume had kind of gone down a little bit the past several months. 
they weren't looking at that bigger picture. So that's always important to do as well, right? So knowing those trend lines, I want to talk to you about five things. And I promise I'm not going to talk forever because I want, really want this to be interactive and I want y'all to ask questions. And I've discovered on Zooms when I when when leaders and trainers talk too long, after a couple of after so long, we start chant sounding like Charlie Brown's school teacher, like wah, 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 wah. And you're like, what did she say? You know, so I promise this is not going to be like a full hour and y'all are going to be like, oh, my gosh, when will she ever stop? So a couple of things, five things that I want you to think about to really apply to your business from this day forward. Right. Because you can only grow from where you are right now. You can't grow from where you used to be. Number one, be consistent. Um, it's so key. Consistency is key. I compare it. I want you to think about riding a bike. When you ride a bike, you know, if you're riding a bike and you go downhill, right, you pick up steam. And then when you go uphill, you can kind of coast up half the hill and then you pedal a little bit, then you're up the hill, right? But if you're on that bike and you're picking up steam and you get to the bottom of the hill and you stop and you get off. You stop and you get off and you walk around, right? When you get back on the bike, it's going to take a whole lot more energy to get going again and get that bike going. So I want you, so most of us kind of sometimes work our business and start stop fits. We do it for a couple of days and we don't do it for a couple of, then we don't do it for four days and we do it for a couple of days and we don't do it. I want you to think of your business more as an ebb and flow where it doesn't have to be the same amount of time every day. I don't care if some days it's five minutes. If that's all you got, do it five minutes, but it's, it's that consistency. Does that make sense? It's then the ebb and flow and not the start stop. That is so key because guess what? If you're doing the start stop, every time you start again, it takes so much more energy. And y'all know what I'm talking about because if you haven't done it for a week or so, in your head, you're like, Oh my gosh, I got to go do this. Like, okay, where am I going to start? Okay, where's my list of prospects? Who am I going to follow up with? Stay in this consistency and think of it as an ebb and flow. And if all you have to give one day is um, 10 minutes, five minutes, then do that and do that really well. And then the next day do maybe a little bit more, but be consistent. And I know we talk about that, but really think about how can you apply that? How can you apply that to your business? Okay, that's number one, be consistent. Number two, I'm a big believer in life balance. I mean, Casey can tell you I talk a lot about life balance. And so most of my coaching sessions, I think when leaders start out with me, they expect me to say, oh, you need to be working Q more and you need to be putting in more hours. Now, I want you to work hard. I'm going to teach people how to work hard, but you also have to have balance. And we have to realize that this is a marathon and not a sprint. Now we go through periods where we're going to sprint. Like sometimes we do, we call those 90 day runs and okay, I'm going to really hustle for 90 days and really get to this next rank or do that. I love those. But when you've been in this industry and you've done this for like a year, a lot of times you look back and you go, I feel like I've been sprinting for the whole last year. And then sometimes we get resentful, right? We're like, oh my gosh, Q's taking over my life. I feel like I never spend time with my family and I'm on call 24 seven and it's all I do, right? Well, if that's how, if that's what you're doing, there's no judgment in this, but recognize that's how you've chosen to run this. And I don't want you to choose to run it this way. And if you're on call 24 seven, you're teaching your team that it's necessary to be on call 24 seven to reach your next level. And I don't believe that's true either. Now, once again, this is not an excuse not to work hard. I don't believe that, but I believe in working smarter, not just harder, right? So not more long hours. So by that, I want you to think about, I believe it's important that we put our phones down every now and then. And those of you in this industry, we know it's hard. Like you're sitting at the dinner table and you're checking your phone, right? Because you're getting messages constantly from, um, from ambassadors and from customers, right? You almost feel like you can never put your phone down. Well, I want you to choose what's your one life balance area. You know, maybe you say, you know what, from here on out, I'm going to put my phone down while I eat dinner with my family. Or maybe you say one night a week, I'm going to after eight, I mean, I'm making up things. Y'all can choose whatever time, you know, but one night a week after 7 p.m. is family time. I'm going to do no business. I have a lot of clients that choose Sunday. They say either the whole day or they choose a certain hour that they say, you know what? Sunday is going to be my day to not do work and not do and not do my Q business and just be with my family. 
life balance is really important. Everybody's boundary is going to be different. So we, we don't want to judge boundaries, but I want you to set one. Like what's one thing that you're going to do to set your boundary to start creating that life balance? Because that's really, it's just really important for you to choose to do that. Now, the third thing, work with the willing. I have an analogy that I love talking about, and it's called two feet in the boat. Okay. And guys, I can use this analogy and it applies whether it works, with whether somebody's the number one income earner in a company or whether somebody's just starting to grow their business. I can describe your organization using a boating analogy in three groups. Okay. So think about your whole team. The first group is standing on the dock. They're not bad people, but they're the people who join and then they, they go into the witness protection program. I mean, I'm kind of kidding, but you know what I mean? Like they join and then all of a sudden they're ghosting you and you're like, what in the world happened? Or they join and they come to all the social events, but they never work their business. They're not bad people. They're just, they're just standing on the dock. Okay. That's group number one. Group number two has one foot in the boat. Now we love one footers in the boat. We love them all. One, but people with one foot in the boat, they're the ones that they kind of work their business and then they disappear. Um, or, or they're the ones that you feel like you're always just convincing them not to quit and just to stay and keep going, right? They take sometimes a lot of energy. Once again, they're not bad people. We're going to love them. They produce a little bit of volume for you, but but they're one, they're kind of they're halfway in. They're in and out all the time. Okay. Here's what's shocking to most people. Those first two groups, standing on the dock and one foot in the boat, here's what you need to know. They represent 80 to 90% of your organization. And I'm, I, I'm telling you, this works every time. So you have a smaller subset of, of people that have two feet in the boat. Now, I want you to write this down because there's three characteristics of people with two feet in the boat. And I want you to know these because every month I want you to evaluate who has two feet in the boat. So two feeders in the boat represent 10 to 20 percent of your organization. And they have three characteristics. Number one, they're coachable. Have you ever talked to that person that you try to give them some advice and they, they already know it all or they don't accept it all? They're not a bad person, but you don't need to spend a whole lot of time on them if they're not coachable. So number one, they're coachable. Number two, their words and actions are aligned. So notice I didn't say they're a runner you know, or they're a rock star. We hear that all the time. I don't care if somebody says I can do this business three hours a week. If they do that, I'm excited because when somebody's words and actions are aligned, it tells me they're mentally in the game. Does that make sense? And then number three, this one's really important. They know how to move past discouragement. Now notice, I didn't say they never get discouraged. I want you to know discouragement is natural. I get discouraged. Marielle gets discouraged. Casey gets discouraged. We all get discouragement. Say natural. We're human. We're supposed to experience all of it, right? But people with two feet in the boat, they know how to move past discouragement. Like they can say, you know what? Yeah. Okay. So the latter part of 2021, I was in decline, but I'm ready to move past that. And I'm ready to look forward. Like they don't live in it. They don't marinate in it. And so I want you to always know who has two feet in the boat. And now it's a, sub, it's a very subjective, it's an art. I one time had a leader ask me if they could send out an email to their whole team and ask them who had two feet in the boat. And I said, absolutely not. You cannot do that. You cannot send out an email and ask. But it's where I want you every month to write down who has two feet in the boat. I don't care if it's one person. Remember, we can only grow from where we are right now. But here's what I want you to know. This is where leaders make the mistake. We spend all of our time and energy trying to get those first two groups to do something. We, oh my gosh, if I, like, let's say you have 10 people on your team. Oh my gosh, I only have two people working. If I could just get those eight to do something, it'd be amazing. And we put all of our energy trying to get those eight people to do something. And then we feel like we're beating our head against a wall. And a lot of times we have this tendency to say, oh, but those other two people, they're doing good. They know how to do it. I don't need to worry about them. And I actually want you to flip that on its head. You should be spending the majority of your time in two places, helping your people with two feet in the boat and your personal business. And I'll tell you, when you do that, it will shift your energy. And why is that? Because when you're just trying to convince the people standing on the dock and the people with one foot in the boat to work, 
That, that's frustrating and discouraging. When you start surrounding yourself with the people that have two feet in the boat and the people that want it, every leader who does this tells me, Jenny, it changed my energy. All of a sudden I was around the people who wanted it. Now, we're always going to have enough grace to realize somebody might have been standing on the dock and you know what, next month might have two feet in the boat. So you're always going to have enough grace for that. I coached a top leader at another company who she sat on the bench for a year, didn't do the business, She lost her job, and the day she lost her job, she just happened to get a text message from her upline that said, hey, if you're ever interested in relaunching your business, just know I'm here for you, and I'm happy to help. And she was like, well, I just lost my job. I got nothing to lose. Next thing you know, she became like the number four income earner in the company. So and I'm not saying I want you to email your people sitting on the bench like every day or every week, but I'm saying we occasionally are reaching out. We're not going to forget about them, but you're not putting all of your energy there trying to convince them to do it. Your energy is going two places, your people with two feet in the boat and your personal business. And if you do that, you will get into growth, right? Because it changes your energy. So it's huge knowing that. And know that if you, you know, your two feet in the boat is 10 to 20% of your organization. That's it. So I'll have people tell me all the time, Jenny, I got 10 people on my team, but only one or two are doing anything. Okay, well, great. You're right in line. That's industry standard. Way to go, right? So just know that. And that also helps people feel better. Like, okay, it is what it is. Here's my two feet in the boat. And I got to go with that, right? So know that. Um, The next, number four. I want you to start thinking about setting goals around activity. When we have gone through the trends that we went through that I explained to you since June of 2021, right? A lot of times we set goals. Now, I want you to have rank goals, but a lot of times we set rank goals um, and then we just stare at it and we get frustrated when we don't hit it. And a lot of times we need to, I would rather you... Until we start really, when you start really building and getting into that momentum, I would rather you set your goals around your activity. How many reach outs are you going to do a day? How many, uh, you know, opportunity Zooms or opportunity events do you want to do? Because guess what? That is activity you can control. You, You might say you have a goal to recruit three ambassadors. I want you to do that. But I care more about the activity you're in because I know if you're in the right activity, the results will come. But sometimes what we do is we set these goals of I just want to hit this rank, like I want to hit bronze or I want to hit silver or I want to hit elite. You know, we set these goals, but we kind of just stare at them and we don't really focus on are we in the right activity to reach that goal. So I would rather you start setting goals around activity versus just setting goals around a rank. Right. Or or like you want to recruit, you know, if you say you want to recruit three ambassadors or you want to recruit so many customers. Well, guess what? Then let's set goals around reach outs, follow up, social media post and opportunities, Zooms and events. Right. Because that's the activity you need to be in. And then when you're tracking, now if you set goals, I want you to track. But when you're tracking, it feels a whole lot better. Like, oh, my gosh, I did my 10 reach outs. OK, I did my follow ups. I did this versus staring at, well, I hadn't recruited my ambassador yet. That gets discouraging week after week. Right. So set your goal around your activity and what you can control. OK, and then last but not least, and then I'm going to open it up. I'm, I'm going to open it up for questions because I want to hear your questions is we have to really realize that a part of this is the head game. Anything you achieve in life, you will achieve in your head first. And so we have to make the choice. We have to make the choice to, you know, okay, I really want to do this. And I want you to come back to your why. Why do you want to do this? You know what I mean? Like you've been in this 14 months and some of you were five months, you know, but no, knowing your why is so important. Knowing your why will drive you. But the biggest part is realizing that we have to align our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. And most of us get into the right activity, right? But, and and a lot of times we might say our affirmations, like, I am successful, I am successful, I am successful. And then we say that affirmation for like 30 days. And at the end of that 30 days, you're like, to heck with this, I don't feel successful, right? But we never think about aligning our feelings. So. For, for us to really, I call it the magic formula, aligning our thoughts, our words, and our actions, 
right? And so that means we got to get in the right activity. We definitely want to work on our thoughts, aligning our thoughts, but then guess what? We can't continue to live in fear and doubt because if we do, we're not aligning how we feel with what we want to happen. You have two choices. You can live by your emotions of the past or you can live by your emotions of the future. If you live by your emotions of the past, your past will become your future. I want you to start teaching your body how do you live by your emotions of the future. So I want you to think right now, what is, what is the next rank you're dying to hit, right? What is it? Um, elite, pro, bronze, gold, silver, write it down. What's the, what's the rank you're dying to hit? And right now, I want you to write down two feelings you would have if you knew you were going to hit that rank tomorrow. You were going to wake up tomorrow morning, you were going to hit that rank. What are two feelings you would have? Two emotions. Write it down. And now the goal is we have to really align to those feelings. Now, I'm not saying if you wrote down like you'd feel successful and you'd feel proud that you're going to walk around all day long feeling successful and proud. Like, I'd love to tell you that I walked around all day long in love and joy, but my kids and husband can be the first to tell you that that's not the case, right? The point is teaching your body to remember what it felt like to be proud and successful. So we do this all the time with negative emotions. I want you to think about a time somebody made you really mad, okay? You made you really mad. And a day later, a week later, sometimes a year later, you're retelling the story. And when you retell the story, you get mad all over again. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like you can feel your blood pressure going, your heart beat, you're mad all over again just by telling the story. Well, what'd you just do? You just created a feeling in your body without the experience happening. We do it all the time with negative ones. So if you can do it with negative emotions, can't you do it with positive ones too, right? So I, all I want you to do is every day for a minute, I call it my one minute challenge. Every day for a minute, if you wrote, like, let's say one of your emotions was proud. I want you to think about a time in your life when you felt really proud. And all you do is replay that experience in your mind. And when you do that, your mind's kind of going to go, oh, yeah, that's what proud felt like. Right. And I mean, you can do this when you're in the shower. Right. Water's running over. You just replay that in your mind. What you're doing is you are teaching your body emotionally what your future feels like. What's your only other choice to continue to live by your emotions of the past or your emotions of your current circumstances? But if we want our future to be different than where we are right now, we have got to align our thoughts, our actions, and our feelings. Now, like I said, that doesn't mean you're never going to feel fear or doubt or anger or frustration. You're going to feel all those. We're on this human journey and we're supposed to feel all of those. But what it means when you start doing this, you are going to create awareness and you are going to start creating awareness of your feelings and you're going to start go, okay, I'm feeling a lot of fear right now. Okay. I have a choice. I can continue to feel fear or I can go back to feeling proud and excited. I got to choose. Here's a hard lesson to learn. And I, I, I'm not saying I've mastered it yet. It's a hard one though. Nothing outside of you can cause a feeling inside of you without you first giving it permission. But most of us give it permission in such an instant, we don't even realize we've given it permission, right? So I want you to start creating awareness of your feelings. And when you're in fear and doubt, there's no judgment there. No, I mean, guilt is like the lowest frequency. Don't have any guilt. Don't have any judgment. Just live in awareness of what you're feeling. And then guess what? With awareness comes choice. And then you get to choose, is this how I want to continue to feel? But I always say, People are reading your energy way more than they're listening to your words. So when you go call that person with two feet in the boat or you go call that prospect, right? They're feeling your energy just as much as they're listening to your words. And y'all know that, you know how you like walk up to somebody, whether it's an old friend or a new person and you just like love, you're like, oh God, I love how that person feels. That person feels really good, right? Versus you also walk up to somebody and you're like, oh, I don't know, something's not right there. Like, I don't, so, you know, or you can walk into a house and nobody said a word. And you're like, okay, like you walk in, maybe your partner or your spouse. And you're like, okay, you're mad. Why are you mad? And they haven't even said a word. How do you know that? It's what you're feeling. You're feeling their energy. So recognize that we want to align our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. And I promise you, when we do that, 
that is where the magic happens. Okay, I want to pause because I want to make see what questions you guys have. Um, feel free, unmute yourself, ask away. What are you guys thinking? Does this resonate? You feel like you can you can take some of this and say, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I can do this. Was anybody surprised by the two feet in the boat and being that and the first two groups representing 80 to 90 percent of your organization? Anyone? Any questions? Yeah, for sure. Like even yeah. in our organization, you know, we get so focused that we have a big organization. And we're like, all right, if we could just get, I want to look at like close to rank reports. I'm like, come on, person, you're like this close. And like I go through that rank, and so many people are just don't care to even, you know, do one reach out so that they can get a paycheck. Um, like when or all they need to do is put their own order in. And like it's just it's <laughs> yeah. insane to see how many people are so close, but want to do nothing for it. And uh yeah, it's a, it's just a good reminder to remember that there are a ton of people in the organization that just aren't going to do anything and to not spend the time and get frustrated on focusing on them or trying to get them to work, but to uh, rally behind the people that mm -hmm. definitely want to be working. That's why every month I want you to evaluate who has two feet in the boat. I want you to write it down. Now, you're not going to like say to people, oh, you have two feet in the boat. No, you don't. But you're going to write it down. And throughout the month, you're going to be adding people to the list. You're going to be taking people off the list but it is going to guide you as to where you're putting your time and energy, right? So you're putting your time and energy, helping your people with two feet in the boat and your, and your personal business. I do appreciate how you did the, encouraged us to do the one minute reflection because I think the biggest thing with, I mean, with me, I don't know about everybody else, but it's such a head game yep. that to, to get out of your head and to, to, do the the think thought feel or the action yeah um, your one minute challenge yep yeah i think those are like going to be really helpful because it's like we just got to get out of our own heads yeah i mean i'll give you i'll give you a personal example so you know back in 2020 COVID hit and i'm not kidding you like day one when 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 lockdown happened um it was as if I, I, it, I lost $40,000 on day one. Now, why is that? Because I had, I had, um, I do a wine and meditation retreat in France. I had to cancel like three of those. I had to cancel all my workshops, all my speaking engagements, you know, companies just started shutting down everything. Right. So it was crazy. So I, what was my first thing? It was fear and panic. Like, oh my gosh, like this is a huge sum of money. Like, what am I going to do? Like I was in panic. And then I was like, Jenny, once again, this is your perfect chance. Practice your own preaching, right? So every day, now I, now I got into activity. I mean, I'm not one of these who thinks you can just sit back and think about it and it's all going to happen, right? I got into the right activity of like, you know, producing some more online programs. and But nothing was like the single ticket item. You know what I mean? Nothing was like, oh, this is going to make up the difference, right? But every day I practiced what would it feel if I knew I was going to get that 40,000 today? Like, what would that feel like? Like, Jenny, you got to live in that energy. But when the fear would come in and I had a lot of fear come in, but I would recognize it. I wouldn't have judgment. I would kind of lean into it. Okay, fear. I hear you. I see you. I recognize you. Now I'm going to release you. And I'm going to go back to feeling abundant, right? I did this for like three months. So I'll tell you a funny example, a funny story. So so the, I didn't do this for like a week. I'm talking like three months. So it was also the first round of the PPP loans. I don't know if anybody else applied for those PPP loans, but the first round of PPP, they were small business loans for people hit by COVID. The first round was like the wild, wild west. Like everybody applied to like eight banks and you never heard back. And the first round of money went to really all the big businesses and all the small businesses were mad, right? So I had applied to like eight banks, had not heard anything back. And I had heard on the news that all the money was gone. So I just figured, okay, I missed it, Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm practicing this living in the abundance of I'm going to get $40,000. I'm going to get $40,000. And I'll kid you not one day, three months later. So this what, like I said, this was not a week or two. I, I had the, the universe and God gave me a lot of time to practice this, but there was a good lesson in that. Three months into it, I get a call from a bank I've never done business with. And they're like, Hey, we just, pro we're just processing your PPP loan. I was like, what? I thought all the money was gone. And they're like, well, we're a small bank. So it took us longer to get going. So we still have some money left. We want you to know that you've been approved for $40,000. And I literally just started laughing out loud. And the guy was like, what's so funny? And I'm like, if you only knew 
the significance of that $40,000, right? But there was such a huge lesson in that for me. The lesson in that was one, live in the energy, but also sometimes it comes to you in the ways that you least expect it. Does that make sense? So I had been so focused on, I have to produce it. I have to produce it, which was important. I mean, I was in the right activity doing it, but that was such a good lesson and a reminder for me to remind her, just focus on the energy, get in the right activity, focus on the energy. And sometimes it's going to happen in the ways you least expect it. And so like the things I teach, I can't promise you, I mean, I'm not perfect at it because perfection is an unworthy journey, but I promise you the things I teach, I personally apply to my life and I personally, and I see amazing stories throughout my own life and throughout the life of my clients. And that was such a great lesson because that was a really good time where I was like, you know what, I'm going to really practice what I preach. And I had a really good story from it. And then the PPP loans completely first round, you could, have you had all the documentation, they completely got forgiven, right? So it wasn't even a loan. I made up that money just from getting the, just from getting, just, just from getting the PPP. So that's what I mean by living in the energy. And like I said, I had a lot of fear come in on a daily basis, but I recognized it and I made the choice. I wasn't going to stay there. And I was going to shift back into abundance and peace. And how do I do that? I would close my eyes and I would replay a time that maybe I did a really good job or closed a really big deal or got a really big check-in. And I would be like, oh yeah, that's what abundant feels like. I'm going back to that. So that's how you can apply it, right? And, And teaching your body to live by your emotions of the future. And I really think on a bigger scale, isn't that what we really all came here to learn? Didn't, if you think about all the great people, like, you know, um, that we really came here to learn how to live above our circumstances and not in them. And that's one way to do it. And I don't think it's about being perfect at it. I think it's just about practicing it a little bit every day. And I will tell you, I mean, when I started really practicing this, I mean, people will notice my husband would come to me. He'd be like, something's different about you. Like your energy's different. Like, what are you doing differently? Like people notice, right? I remember I had friends they are like, you know, Jenny, like how, how do you, you, you just lost a huge sum of money. Like I had friends freaking out about their small business and they're like, you just lost this huge sum of money. How are you not in total panic mode? I'd be like, well, panic sets in, but then I have to make the choice that I have to shift to something else. So that's kind of my real world example of how I apply the one minute challenge of aligning your thoughts, your actions, actions, and your feelings. But because if we're honest, most of us don't think about our feelings. Like we a lot, we get in the right activity and we think about our thoughts. Okay, I need to be thinking I'm successful. I'm successful. But if we're honest on the inside, we're really feeling fear and doubt. And so then we have misalignment. So that's where you want to align all three. Okay, what other questions? Y'all can ask me anything, anything at all. I can't promise you always have answers, but you can ask me anything. I love this. This either, I love it when it's crickets because it either tells me I've completely stumped all of you and y'all are going to get off and say, I have no idea what she just said. Or it means you're like, really, you got it. Y'all are all good to go. And everybody's like, okay, let's hit the ground. Let's go. (laughs) Anyone? I um, would say that I think the thing that I took most from this is just the action that you were talking about and the consistency. I think that I have been going in spurts more than I have been wanting to admit probably. <laughs> so I, um, I think that that action is really going to help me get to my goals. And I think that I can start planning my goal or planning my goals around the action that I'm going to take. And that's really going to help me a lot. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Just get into like 30 to 60 days where you're like, okay, you know what, the next 30 to 60 days, this is the activity I'm going to commit to and then track it. Right. And don't look at it as, as um, all or nothing. Like, you know what I mean? Like we teach in the system I teach, I teach people that you want to be achieving over 70% of your goal, right? If you're achieving over 70%, that's a win. Now let's take reach outs as an example, Lauren, let's say you set a goal to do 10 reach outs. I mean, let's just say a week, I'm just going to use simple math, right? So a lot of people will go, okay, my goal was 10 reach outs. And then they'll think, well, I did nine. Okay. Well, I failed. My goal was 10. I didn't do them all. So I failed. 
I teach people to say your goal is to achieve 70% of that. So in my opinion, I want you to hit 10, but if you're doing at least seven or above, that's 70%. Because we know if you're achieving over 70% of your goal, you are moving in the right direction. And too many people see goals as hit or miss. I mean, I was coaching with a client just last week and they're like, well, I failed. I'm like, what, what do you mean? They're like, well, my goal was to make 10,000 this month. I only made eight. I failed. I'm like, what? No, you got 80% of that goal. Like that's a win. You know, so, so we've been conditioned to see goals as hit or miss. So see your goals as a percentage of goals accomplished, right? And then track. Because if you're not tracking, you don't know. And if you're not tracking, we have a tendency to get in our feelings. Well, I feel like I'm doing bad. I feel like I'm not doing anything. So Lauren, just make it simple. Like decide I'm going to do this many reach outs. You know, then I'm going to do this many follow ups and I'm going to do this many whatever. You know, Casey and Zach can help you with that. But decide on don't do, I mean, five at the most. More likely, I'd like you to probably have like three. You know what I mean? Don't try to do like, don't track 10 things. Track Decide three to five things that you want to do on a weekly basis, track that, and know that it's not about perfection. I would be trying to achieve, you know, at least 70% of those goals. Because if you're achieving 70%, you're moving in the right direction. I love that. Thank you. You are welcome. Great question. Great comments. Who else? What other questions? Don't be I have shy, a question. Guys. Oh, okay, who was that? Grace. I think Grace, you go. Okay. This one's kind of quick. Um, so when you're identifying your two feet in the boat people, um, how do you balance like working within your legs? Let's say all of your two feet in the boat people are in a certain leg, but you're balancing like your personal business. Of course, you're working on recruiting. Um, but let's say none of your current people are two feet in the boat people in like you're asking your other legs. So all your two feet in the boat people are in one leg, right? Yeah. And that's okay. So what I would say is you're going to help them because, you know, you want to keep that leg going, right? You're going to help them. But then for your other two legs, we're not going to ignore them all together, but we're going to recognize I have no two feet in the boat people in my other two legs. So number one, I'm going to accept that. And now I know I've got to go focus on my personal business because it's going to be my personal recruits that are going to build back those other two legs. Okay, thank you. And that's now, just if like if your uh, one like leg hyper, is really hyper yeah, if you're, overly, well, if your you one know. leg is really off balance, like if, if all your two feet in the boat people are in like a leg that's really big and you're maxed out in that leg, right? Then I would say you're working with just the leader of that leg. And if you have a good leader, then guess what? That leader is working with their two feet in the boat people, right? So hopefully. If that's a strong leg, you're working with the leader. The leader is then going to support their two feet in the boat people. And then that's going to free you up to go do more personal recruiting to go build back the other two legs. Thank you. Does that make sense? Does that help? Yes. So I would go teach this concept of two feet in the boat to your leader of that big leg that has all your people in it. And you're going to say, hey, I'm going to work with you. I want to help you identify who has two feet in the boat. And I mean, you're here as supplemental support, but she's the main line of support for those people. And then you're her main line of support. And then guess what? Then you have more bandwidth to go work on your personal business to bring in more recruits to get those other two legs going. Does that help, Grace? Does that make sense? That does, yes, thank you. You are welcome, great question. Who else has a question? Anyone? I love seeing all the babies. They're so cute. <laughs> okay, well, I don't want to keep you if there's not any other questions. Um, I gave you all a lot of information tonight. So here's the other thing I want you to do. Um, now, you, you can implement more than one thing, but don't feel like you have, like, you remember I gave you five tips, you know, be consistent, life balance, work with the willing, uh, set your goals around activity and, and you know, the, the head game. I'd love for you to go do all five, but remember, I'm all about setting attainable goals. So don't overwhelm yourself. Right now, choose one. 
you know, choose, choose one thing and say, you know what, I'm going to go do that one thing really well. And then you can add in something else. The great news is this is recorded. I would really encourage you next week or the week after to listen to this again, because I promise you it's, it's just like if you read a book or you watch a movie, the second time you watch it, you catch something you didn't hear the first time. Right. So just know, um, don't feel, don't feel overwhelmed. and feel like you got to go do it all. Choose one thing and do that really well, and then come listen to this again and add on and then choose another. That, I mean, I always, one of the biggest concepts I teach is this, you learn to win by winning, not by losing. And that sounds so simple, but oh my gosh, we have, we set ourselves up to lose all the time. Just think about New Year's resolutions. Studies show 90% of people have given up on their New Year's resolution by January 16th. 16 days in for a whole year, they've given up. So we have conditioned ourselves to teach or set ourselves up to lose. And I want you to start learning how to set yourself up to win, which is why I talked about setting goals around activity. If, if you can't, I mean, you know, don't go say you're going to do 100 reach outs a week when you know last month you did two a day. I mean, two a week. You know what I mean? Like, like set attainable goals and set yourself up to win is so huge. So. With that, I will, I don't know if Casey, if you or Zach have anything else y'all want to say in closing us out, I will just say, thank you. Thank you, one, for having me. Two, thank you for showing up. Showing up is always step number one. And I am truly like so in gratitude that all of you decided to um, make the time and the space to be here tonight because that's important and not, and not everybody does it. So I'm so thankful and filled with gratitude that you made the choice um, if you hang up this and you have a question, because that always happens sometime, Casey knows how to find me. So do not hesitate. Let her know. She can get any questions to me and we can get those answered. And um, I just can't wait to hear about um, y'all kind of implementing some of these things and, and what happens, because I know it's going to be amazing. So I wish you many blessings and much abundance. So Casey, I'll turn it back over to you to maybe close this out. Thank you so much, Jenny. We are so appreciative. I hope you guys got really good notes. I know every time I talk to her, I feel like I overcomplicate my business in my head or like she talked about, like I get caught up in the emotions of things and she's so good at just bringing it back to the simplistic, like the basics, um, just breaking it down in the easy things that we can focus on one stepping stone at a time. You know what I mean? Um, so I hope that that was really helpful for you guys. Jenny, we are so appreciative of you taking the time to invest in us. Um, and she means that guys, if you have any questions that pop up, she is She's not just my business coach. My business coach means that she is your guys' support system too, in the sense that we're always talking about how we can help set you guys up for winning. Um, and so we're just super thankful for that. And yeah, I don't, do you have anything? No, thanks for showing up. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much, you guys. It speaks volumes, it speaks <laughs> absolute volumes. Thank Bye, you, have a great night. Thank you. Thanks so much, guys. Thank <laughs> you.